Are you ready to have your mind blown? Follow me down this rabbit hole. These are two identical twins. They're genetically identical, yet one of them is obese and the other one has a healthy weight. These mice are also twins. They're genetically identical, but they have the same problem. Now, both mice used to look like this until they took gut bacteria from this person and put it in this mouse. The diets did not change. They ate the same number of calories, the exact same diets, yet one of them maintained the healthy weight and one became obese. How is that possible? Here's something else that's even more curious. A woman with a healthy weight and a healthy lifestyle underwent what's called a C. diff transplant. This is where because of a deficiency, they use stool from somebody's colon that's healthy and move it into her colon to help with the C. diff problem. Yeah, it's a fecal transplant, a poop transplant. It may sound strange, but it's life-saving. But this time, something went wrong. The donor of the feces was an obese individual, whereas the recipient had always maintained a healthy weight and a healthy lifestyle. After getting the transplant, she noticed she started to gain weight. Now, she didn't change her diet, she didn't change her caloric intake or her lifestyle. But over the next 12 months, she could not keep weight off. She gained weight until she was eventually obese as well. Through these studies, scientists were able to identify an anti-fat bacteria, Cristincinella. If you have this bacteria, it makes it very, very difficult to gain weight. If you lack this bacteria, it makes it much, much easier. Right now, inside of each of us, there are 39 trillion bacteria. There's roughly 30,000 species of bacteria. We're learning that these bacteria may not just be influencing, but perhaps may be in control of our metabolic health, our mental health, our immune health, our hormonal health, our overall health. Think of your bacteria like a diverse ecosystem where everything is working together to survive in harmony. There are some snakes and mosquitoes, but we need them too, because without them, the whole ecosystem falls apart. If your gut health is poor, you have a very limited amount of species living there. It's like this wasteland. There's not much living. And we're finding that this lack of diversity leads to metabolic health and mental health problems and a bunch of other health problems. Having microbial diversity means that the bacteria are working together in symbiotic relationships, and it's helping reverse a lot of the mental and metabolic health problems. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. We should all just eat healthier, exercise more, and stop making excuses. Well, if we all know that's the case, why do some of us do it and others do not? Could it be that perhaps microbes are driving our impulses? This could be great news for people that are struggling with these things and other conditions because scientists are finding a link between our gut health and these problems. Now, perhaps you've heard that you can improve your gut health with probiotics, prebiotics, symbiotics, antibiotics. It can be very, very confusing. If you're interested in learning more about some of these things, you can watch this TikTok video I did called The Second Brain. You can also watch this one called If Your Brain Controls Your Body, What Controls Your Brain? And I've answered some questions about prebiotic supplements. Now, I talk about this a lot, but perhaps fasting and fiber are more than just weight loss strategies. They're the key to unlocking and improving your overall health.